right, so uh, it's the heavyweight showdown that, you know, the uh, everybody's going to be arguing about, for better or for worse. But uh, here we go. The first ever touchscreen BlackBerry, the Storm 9530. Uh, this is the Verizon Wireless version. It's also available on Vodafone in the UK. And over here on the right, it's the Apple iPhone 3G, the AT&T version. And uh, behind the camera, I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. And full disclosure, uh, those of you who follow, have seen some of my other videos or follow the website or whatever, will know that I've long been uh, my personal phone. I review, you know, lots of phones, but my personal phone has been an iPhone unlocked running on T-Mobile, the first gen. Uh, those days are over. I'm done with the iPhone. I've become too frustrated with uh, certain limitations on it, mostly the fact that you can't send MMS messages or unless you, you know, use a, a third-party hack and stuff like that, and a few other things about it that I'm just kind of tired of. So in the meantime, I'm rocking the Nokia Express Music 5310, a very low-end phone that, honestly, I'm really quite fond of. Uh, it's very slim. The screen is small, but it's clear, 16 million colors, looks really good. And it works, man. The battery life's long. It doesn't crash. It doesn't lag. And uh, it's got a music player, so I can, you know, plug my headphones straight into it, listen to my music, my podcasts. And it sends MMS messages, what the iPhone still doesn't do for some reason. So anyway, full disclosure, just so you know, um, long-time iPhone user. The Storm just came out last week, so obviously not quite as familiar with it. But I will show you around the two devices, try to compare them a little bit, give you my opinions, you know, as objectively as possible. But we've all got our biases and preferences, so I'll try to be honest about those and tell you what I think. Uh, before I say anything else, though, if you're interested in either of these phones, try before you buy. I mean, seriously, that's, you know, you can watch these videos, you can see things, how they work and everything, but uh, like I said, this is my opinion. I mean, as a, you know, person who does this for a living and trying to be objective, but it's still my opinion. Your preferences may differ quite a bit from mine or from the person who's arguing with you in the comments. That being said, here we go. Uh, physically, the Storm is basically a little bit smaller, but noticeably thicker and heavier than the iPhone. Um, you can see the iPhone on the right, Storm on the left. And, you know, height and width, um, they're roughly the same. The Storm's a little bit shorter, a little bit wider. Um, the screen on the iPhone is, uh, you know, a little bit bigger, kind of longer. Uh, the, the Storm screen is uh, just a hair taller or wider, depending on you're holding it, than the iPhone. But the Storm, like I said, is noticeably uh, noticeably thicker and heavier than the iPhone. They're both pretty pocketable. The BlackBerry feels more like a BlackBerry, you know, if you've ever used a Curve or a, or a Bold, um, you know, despite the obvious differences with the full touchscreen. Just kind of holding it in your hand, it feels more like a BlackBerry. The iPhone, you know, is a little bit thinner. Um, but I think they both look really nice. I think, you know, BlackBerry did a really nice job making the Storm look a little more slick, kind of a little more consumer friendly, that kind of thing. Uh, looking at the devices, they both have the touch screens. Uh, as you probably know by now, the BlackBerry, the gimmick here is that the touch screen actually clicks. Um, so when you want to make a selection, you first tap on it to highlight it, and then you click to make your selection. The BlackBerry also has four buttons on the bottom. And the iPhone, the gimmick really is that it's a multi-touch screen. Uh, they're both capacitive. They're both very responsive, I've found. The iPhone, when you're doing certain things on it, um, you can, you know, do the pinching and stuff like that to zoom in and out and that kind of thing. Uh, we'll get more into that later. The iPhone only has one button on the bottom to take you back to the home screen or it's programmable to take you to other places as well. On the left side, um, I mean, basically, you know, without running down every single button here. Uh, you've got volume controls on both of them. You've got a standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack on both of them. Uh, you've got a lock switch on the iPhone. It's up here on the BlackBerry. There are actually two buttons here on the top that people tend to not notice at first. The lock switch is one of them. Uh, the BlackBerry has a couple more shortcut keys on it. The iPhone, you know, a little more austere. It's just got the rocker switch and the uh, mute switch on the sides and then your hold switch and, you know, so fewer buttons on the iPhone. Uh, on the back, they both have cameras. The uh, Storm 3.2 megapixel autofocus with an LED flash, flash light, I'll call it. It's more of a light than a true flash. iPhone 2 megapixel fixed focus, no flash. The iPhone uh, has a famously non-removable battery. The back cover does not come off. You've got your SIM card slot up here with a little uh, pinhole. It comes with a tool for removing it, or you can use a uh, paper clip to take the SIM card tray out. On the BlackBerry, it's more like a, uh, you know, a standard cell phone. 
the uh, back cover comes off and you've got removable battery, you've got uh, your micro SD card slot, we'll talk about that in a second, and there's actually also a SIM card slot. The BlackBerry Storm is a CDMA phone locked to Verizon, but it has a SIM card slot, comes with a Verizon SIM card meant for international roaming. Uh, theoretically, the phone could probably be unlocked for use on other GSM networks, but uh, you know, officially it's locked to Verizon and then you can roam globally. There's also a Vodafone version of the phone over in the UK, but we're looking at the Verizon version. Um, the iPhone is a GSM phone that's locked to AT&T. Uh, this iPhone is actually jailbroken, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then the, the Storm has one gigabyte of internal memory and a micro SD card slot. Comes with an eight gigabyte micro SD card, as you can see. So you've got nine gigabytes of available storage out of the box, and you can expand that with a larger micro SD card. The iPhone comes in 8 and 16 gigabyte versions. This is the 8 gigabyte version. Uh, it's internal memory. It is not expandable. There's no card slot. As I mentioned, this is a jailbroken phone. Uh, this, the iPhone 3G came out uh, a while ago, several months ago, and we did a review on it, and we no longer have an active line of service for this phone. Um, but I wanted to have the phone on hand to show you how different things work. So it's jailbroken, and uh, I'm hooked up to the network over Wi-Fi. So the iPhone does GSM does Edge and it does 3G data and it has Wi-Fi. The uh, Storm is a CDMA phone. It does high-speed data 3G over uh, EVDO Rev A. There's no Wi-Fi on the BlackBerry Storm. So there you go, kind of the basics about the two devices. Uh, they both have accelerometers built in. They both have capacitive touch screens. And, uh, you know, basically, um, when you get down to it, there's kind of a few different components of these phones. There's how they work as a phone, how they work for messaging, so email, text messaging, IM, that kind of stuff. How they work for multimedia and entertainment, and then uh, the smartphone capabilities. So, you know, syncing with uh, corporate systems and, you know, personal calendars, email. Well, the email accounts kind of bridge between messaging and syncing. Uh, calendar functionality, expandability, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's start out with a phone. Basically, as a phone, um, my, my personal opinion is that the Storm is a much better phone, hands down. Uh, the call quality is better. Um, some of that is due to the, uh, the networks. Verizon, at least where I am here in the San Francisco Bay Area, just generally has better coverage, better signal strength. But also the devices themselves, the iPhone 3G has been a little bit notorious for having um, problems with drop calls and signal strength and that kind of thing. There's a new firmware update 2.2, which is on this phone that just came out last week. Uh, I can't really speak to what improvements that actually makes. Uh, you guys, if you have an iPhone with the new firmware, if you have the 3G, you know, in the comments, put down where you are in the country and, uh, you know, or the world for that matter, and how your phone's doing with, uh, with drop calls and that kind of stuff. But um, where I am, um, you know, and as I said with the phone stuff, I haven't used the iPhone uh, to make calls in the past month or so, so I can't speak too much to that. I can say that when I did use it, compared to when I've been using the BlackBerry lately, uh, the BlackBerry is a better phone in terms of uh, signal strength and, and phone issues, but also just the sound. There's a dual microphone noise canceling system in here that works really well. I've made calls from you know really crowded, loud places. I was in a coffee shop left a voicemail just as the, uh, you know, the, the cappuccino milk steamer thing went off and made all kinds of racket. And the voicemail came through super clear. You couldn't hear any of the background noise or very little of it. Really a nice job in the phone functionality uh, as far as voice quality goes. The BlackBerry also has a few more features as far as, far as calling goes. Um, there's a voice command system, which is the, the most notable of the additional features and uh, you know I just think it works a little bit better as a phone. Both phones support mono Bluetooth, BlackBerry also supports stereo but that's more of a multimedia thing. Uh, you can also, both phones have speaker phones. The BlackBerry is louder, it's got a very loud speaker phone. Uh, the iPhone you know for me wasn't too bad in terms of the voice quality but the, or the, the volume level with the speaker phone but the BlackBerry definitely louder and they both have uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jacks and come with stereo headsets with inline mics, so you can use a wired headset um, right out of the box as well. Um, the one caveat with using the phones as, uh, or using the devices as phones, is that the iPhone has a really nice proximity, sister, uh, proximity sensor 
that basically when you hold the phone up to your face, it dims the screen and it locks out all the buttons so you can't accidentally hit any buttons during a call. And then if you want to, uh, you know, if you're in a call and you want to access, you know, speakerphone or any of the other uh, functions, your phone book, et cetera, et cetera, when you pull the phone away from your face, the keypad comes back up. The BlackBerry, at least out of the box, isn't set that way. And I actually had some issues accidentally depressing the screen, muting the call, turning on speakerphone, that kind of stuff, uh, straight out of the box. So, you know, just in terms of out of the box experience for the, uh, the novice, because again, you know, BlackBerry and Verizon are trying to market this as a much more consumer friendly BlackBerry than, uh, you know, the curve and the, the bold and the more business oriented phones. Um, just straight out of the box, people, you know, may find they have some issues with uh, accidental face clicks during calls. So let's move on to, uh, to messaging.